Hey guys, this is Dr. LeHue again uh, for another session. And today we're gonna to be talking about Enneagram Type 5, The Investigator. And uh, I've got my notes in front of me, so if I'm looking down, that's what I'm looking at. And uh, The Investigator, above all, is somebody that wants to rely on themselves, that wants to depend on themselves, um, that uh, tends to pull away from people um, and live in their inner workings of their mind. And so they're very they come across as very intelligent people uh, because they're very focused and driven uh, in their pursuit of information and their pursuit of mastery of some niche of information. Um, so let's look at the type five and go into a little bit more detail um, about what makes the uh, investigator tick and what's going on in their heart and in their mind. Again, uh, five and six and seven are all in the fear group so the basic idea is that the five is sort of afraid of the outside world. The outside world, <clears throat> you know, where people are interacting and uh, it, it can be an overwhelming experience. And so fives retreat away from that outside world into their inner world, which makes sense to them. The inner world is not something to be afraid of. That's where facts and information and ideas and, and all these big thoughts, you know, that are going around in their head. Uh, that's where they feel most safe and most secure. So you might think of them as having like a, a giant brain when it comes to uh, where they want to spend their time. It's not that they're smarter than anybody else. It's just that their fear drives them into um, that inner world and understanding and mastering information and that gets you know rolled around in that inner world. In terms of the outer world, it's kind of like they have this giant brain but then like a small battery. Uh, their battery pack of energy for interacting with people, um, it, they feel run down, like that runs them down. And so they often don't have a lot of tolerance for spending time with, with people. They can come across as very emotionally detached because of that, probably more detached than any of the other types on the Enneagram, at least emotionally attached, uh, which in, sometimes makes them very good at, uh, at being you know, not only problem solvers, but in a crisis, if everybody at work is, you know, upset over an issue <clears throat> and, and people are taking sides, <clears throat> the five, you know, can be very good at uh, analyzing the situation based on information and facts and leaving the emotional elements out of it. You know, we get crossways with people and we're frustrated to where we no longer will listen to reason. We just, whatever reason, we, we get frustrated with, with the other side or the other opinion and um, um, we may, you know, let our emotions or the manner in which things were said skew our clear thinking. And simply because we don't like somebody or because we're offended by that person, we may not really listen to reason. The five is really good in that they tend to emotionally minimize, you know, the way in which things were said um, to get to what was actually said. So they're more interested in getting to the facts and information and you said this and you said that and bottom line, here's the issue and they can like weed through and see through all of that uh, emotional turmoil to just what's the information that needs to make a decision. What's the information? Fives are, um, you know, uh, seeking some area that they can master. They're seeking some niche, whether it's uh, medicine or alternative medicine or um, history or some aspect of history. And they tend to be drawn toward the information at the edges of information. In other words, they're not very interested. They don't tend to be very interested in what everybody else already knows. <clears throat> not to say that they couldn't be a, a teacher and just teach you know, the subject as it is in the curriculum, but they're going to be drawn primarily to information that other people don't have. Um, so for example, if they were to teach, if I as a seven were gonna teach an American history class, I would probably teach it in such a way as to try to inspire students to uh, be all that they could be, or to try to inspire them to think about things um, in a way that is motivational. And a five is going to tend to teach a subject like American history 
from the standpoint of let me tell you what you don't know or let me tell you what everybody thinks is true but I'm going to show you that um, some of those facts in history didn't actually happen and they're going to try to approach it from a subject from a standpoint of what you thought you knew but what is actually the truth and so in that sense they're drawn to like the the outskirts of knowledge they're drawn to um what people to in a sense to try to undermine what you think you know and show you what you didn't know um if they were going to teach um let's say like in a church they're going to teach you know uh they're going to be drawn to things like the book of revelation which is you know difficult and challenging and they're not going to teach it probably in the sense of like let's just go through the book and let's understand it it's going to be you know what what uh, you thought you knew from the book of revelation and then try to help you see that you know it's much deeper than you expected so fives are drawn to that um information mastery of information and then helping you see what you don't know if you sit down with a five and you begin explaining what you know they're not necessarily going to be interested in what you know except to find out what you know so that they can show you what you don't know okay i don't know if that made sense but fives are always learning okay which is interesting because not very often do they really seek out a teacher they can be a challenge for teachers because they have inquisitive minds they have a drive and remember the drive is motivated by by fear uh, they may not realize that but there's fear that's driving them but they have a drive toward information and mastery information that could frustrate teachers because a lot of teachers, you know, they just want to teach the curriculum and they want to get their point across and they don't really want to answer those questions on the fringes of their subject. You know, they just want to teach the textbook. And a five is, you know, sort of pushing that teacher, well, what about this? Well, what about that? What about this aspect? What would happen if this? And so fives can sometimes, you know, be frustrating to teachers. And fives often don't really enjoy that process of traditional education they want to seek out information in their own ways so the classroom is always open for them the the subject is always you know moving around in their mind and they're always analyzing and thinking about it but they may not approach it in the same way that the typical student does they're always learning always seeking information yet kind of want to teach themselves that information and then when they have opportunity to speak with you they may be very stingy with that information remember their sin is the sin of avarice or greed um, think Ebenezer Scrooge okay Ebenezer Scrooge is a good example of a five um, not always in terms of money but uh, in terms of I know what I know I have the information and I will disseminate that information if I choose to but I don't feel compelled to and they can hold that information and their stuff. It may very well be stuff too, like their room, you know, their office, and they don't want to be intruded on. They don't want you barging in at any time and, uh, you know, invading their space, intruding on their space. Um, and they may, you know, guard against that intrusion, protect themselves from that external intrusion, and then hold on to what's theirs. And they don't need a lot. They're not looking for a lot. They're not like sevens who are always looking for more. They're looking for more information, but uh, and, they're, and they can be stingy and guarded with that information. Uh, but they're they they're minimalists. Fives are minimalists. They don't uh, they don't want a lot of clothes. They don't want a lot of possessions. They may be very comfortable with something very simple like a good laptop and uh, a couple of changes of clothes and and, and may eat a very sparse diet. Um, or a very, uh, you might say, lacking diet uh, nutritionally because uh, they can be very minimalistic. Um, they just want you know, the essentials so that they can focus their attention on what it is that has captured their interest. And I think at the end of the day, they feel safe when they've mastered something. It's sort of like the hermit on the edge of the village, you know? 
fives kind of look like old Merlin over there who lives at the edge of the village off by themselves in sort of a ramshackle cottage no real attention to what you might think of what we would think what other types would think is the essentials of life you know uh, they're very focused on their spells and potions you know um, and they're studying you know uh, all of the ancient manuscripts on how to repel dragons and in case one day a dragon should come to the village they'll be ready they'll be prepared and when the dragons come to the village uh, and the whole village is in a panic um, they'll come to the door of the five and the old hermit will come out cast their spell and save the day and it's in that sense that that fear drives the five that pursuit of knowledge that pursuit of information that mastery of information that when the zombie apocalypse comes they'll be prepared because they will have the map they will have the information when the dragon comes to the village they'll know the spell that will be able to cast them away and so they'll be safe because of what they know fives tend to believe that you know the only one they can really depend on is themselves and so they are always in a sense preparing themselves um, they can sometimes you know forego the basic decencies of life um, paying no attention or little attention to what we would call social norms um, because that isn't important and sometimes you know even the basics of like nutrition like I said nutrition or basic body hygiene may not be all that important wearing you know style and you know fashion those kinds of things unless that's their niche now if that's their niche then that's a different story but if it's not their niche then you know they may walk around in the same clothes they've been wearing for three days and really pay no attention to it not even think about it just completely oblivious it doesn't matter they don't care it's not important um, you know as long as they're comfortable and uh, you know they'll they have their shirt on backwards and you know go off to the store um, to either you know get their next um, epic video game okay or their next uh, you know books or whatever information or you know whatever so they're not they're not going to pay a lot of attention to um, you know social norms and customs and those things the niceties or the pleasantries of life um, and and kind of in this way fives can get lost because they can kind of lose what's in front of them to do today you know, maybe they have a child who's in a, uh, a drama uh, or in a competition, a karate competition or something, and they may just miss that. And even if they're present at it, they may not be mentally present. Fives are here, but not here, okay? They're here, they're, they may be present, but they're not mentally here uh, and emotionally here. So they could be present, but not present to life. And remember, that's really what the Enneagram teaches us all, all of us, is how to be present to life. And so they may not be present to life because, you know, they're, they're not aware maybe of what they're wearing. It's not important. They have the same outfits that they wear over and over with a little regard or a little thought to it. Um, if they remember to do the basic hygiene stuff, um, great, but it's just not important it's not what life's about to them and so uh, they don't want to be noticed uh, if they if they're going to be noticed they want to be noticed for their competence competence that's an important concept for fives by the way when fives feel incompetent that's the worst fear is that they're incompetent inept and unable and unprepared that's the worst fear right there the afraid of being inept the afraid of being unable uh, inability unprepared in the sense of like unprepared with the information I think the six is more like wants to be prepared for whatever catastrophe might happen so they have all the the gear and the relationships intact the five wants all the information so that they can be prepared you know when the crisis inevitable crisis might come um, but by the way when fives feel inept um, that's the weapon they'll use against you is they'll make you feel 
like you're inept. In other words, if they feel stupid, they're going to make you feel stupid. If they feel unqualified, then they're going to make you feel unqualified. Um, so fives can be kind of prickly. Okay, They can be kind of like the old cactus out there in the desert. That's a good example of a five. You know, they don't need a lot. A lot of trees need tending to, you know, maintenance in order to survive. Fives don't. Fives want to be left alone. They're out there in the desert. They're out there in isolation. They're kind of out there on their own. And they don't want you to get too close to them. They don't want to be intruded on. So they have these prickly little spines, you know, that sort of keep you at a distance. Uh, fives may be direct um, in their, you know, in their dealing with you, straightforward and to the point. Uh, without you know placating your sensitivities again they're detached emotionally so you know they may not be aware that they're coming across directly and offensively okay at times um, or they may just kind of awkward you away you know if they don't want to deal with you they may just kind of like have their own ways to just kind of make you feel awkward just sort of stand there and look at you till you go away you know, or until you say what's on your mind and leave. That's the goal is that you go away. You, you don't, you quit intruding on them and their space. They want to get back to their stories, back to their epic game, back to their music or back to their information or back to their YouTube videos or back to, you know, their research or whatever it is. And so they might awkward you sort of out of the room. Fives kind of have a special um, superpower of going invisible. You know, a nine can kind of like be invisible if they're not careful, if they're not awake and present to life. The nine can kind of be invisible in that they go along with everybody. The five can be invisible in that they just make their presence, um, I'm not sure how to say it, they just kind of make their presence like not known. They're there, but it's almost like when they leave the room, people may not remember that they were even there. Um, let's say a five and an eight are friends and they, they go walk into a, an assembly where a bunch of people are around and everybody's you know standing around talking, maybe like a, a wedding shower or a, you know whatever kind of a party's going on. Uh, and the five and eight are friends. The five may just saddle up next to that eight who's more assertive. And the eight's going around talking to people you know, and interrupting conversations and reconnecting with people. And the five is just sort of moving with them in the pack without saying anything. They just kind of move with them. And then when they leave, um, the eight will have made an impression on people. And you go back and ask the people, you know, did, did, you, did you have an interaction with, with the eight? Oh, yeah, I remember that conversation we had. Do you remember that the five was there with them? Nope. Don't even remember that they were there. And fives can kind of like turn on an invisibility cloak and just, you know, be there but not be there. And again, not present to life. That's that's what this study is all about, is how to be more present to life. Okay, so fives want to make sense of the world. They want to understand why things are the way they are. They want to get to the bottom of things. They want to unravel the information. And they may want to unravel your held beliefs. The 5-4 is called the uh, iconoclast. Okay, an iconoclast is somebody who, who challenges your paradigm, you might say, or your belief system. They, they undermine your belief system and show you that kind of what you've always believed may or may not be based on good information. Again, it goes back to that idea of let me teach you what you don't know. Um, let me teach you what you're not aware of. <clears throat> and that gives them that sense of, of confidence. That's, that's what they're seeking, that sense of confidence, that sense of, uh, of adept you know, uh, ability is because I know something you didn't know. Now, when you know something they don't know, they'll, they may minimize that. Uh, because they don't want to know maybe what you know. They want you to know that they know something you don't know and that gives them that I don't have anything to be afraid of because look I have all the information so I'm okay and I think is what that's what calms their fears okay so um, they want to search into stuff for themselves and they want to test the truth of assumptions uh, themselves um, 
behind their relentless pursuit of knowledge is sort of a restless insecurity about their ability to function in the world as it is. So outside world seems unpredictable, chaotic, threatening, and intrusive. So the fives uh, kind of have this insecurity about themselves that they won't be able to function in the world as well as maybe some others. And so in the back of their mind, they want to feel more capable. They want to feel more able. And so rather than observe life, you know, as it is and be a participant in life, they kind of retreat into sort of like a cubicle or think like, uh, you know, the safety of like an office or, okay, I got, an, I got an example. When you think about like those ghost shows where they have those ghost hunters, you know, the eight and the seven there and the four, they're walking around the, the haunted mansion, you know, um, running all kinds of diagnostic tests, yelling at ghosts and all that. Where's the five? The five is outside in a van with all of the uh, computer monitors around them watching all the cameras. That's where they feel safe. And they're observing all this world, but from the safety of like an enclosed space removed away from the actual activity. That's a great example of like what fives want in life, I think, is I want, they want to observe the information and they want to take it all in and sort it out, but sort of from the safety of a remote location. Okay, sort of a drone's perspective to life. And again, that's how they get lost. Is you, The reality is, is you can't effectively live like that. You are a participant to life. Whatever your Enneagram number is, even if you're a five, you're participating in life. You are somebody's son or daughter, you are somebody's husband or wife, you are somebody's parent, you are somebody's brother or sister or co-worker, and you're not there as a remote person. You're there as a real person. People interact with you just as they interact with others. You are really there in flesh and blood. So this may be a construct in your mind that you are can kind of be there in a remote way, but you're not. You're there very much present physically. Now the challenge is to be there present, you know, emotionally and mentally. Okay. So it's kind of like when they, when they get a handle on everything and they feel like they're competent and they feel like they can understand the world, then they'll rejoin life at that later date. That's sort of like, I think, the mindset of what's going on. That one day when they understand things correctly, then they'll be able to rejoin the world. Um, so kind of think like the absent-minded professor. That's a good, I think, image of what fives can kind of be like. Um, they want to remain detached and unaffected by others. Their identity is built around having a profound idea or profound ideas and then being someone who has something insightful to say something useful to say. Now what they think is useful and what everybody else thinks is useful may be two separate things. You know, um, a five can be kind of like a dump truck, all right? In other words, they're kind of driving around in life, loading up information. It's all, you know, loading up information, loading it up. Stuff that they're interested in and stuff that they think is important. And it may be, you know, everything to know about trees, or everything to know about automotive engines or everything you know about air conditioners and heating you know units and so they're loading up all this information um, I've got a son who's a five and uh, you know he's always loading up information about the world of the Marvel Universe or the DC Universe comic books you know he'd rather learn about the Marvel Universe than actually read a Marvel comic and so he's always gathering information like a dump truck and like a dump truck you know the exterior of that truck is steel okay so it doesn't it isn't you can't penetrate it okay it's steel and all the information is inside that and they're putting information in but it's hard for you to get into that dump truck of information yourself because it's not easily to penetrate okay so it's it's uh, distant in a sense. Now, they can be kind of stingy with that information, believing that that information is what keeps them safe in the world. 
And then if you should be so lucky that they decide to back that dump truck up and unload all that information on you, you can be easily overwhelmed with all of the information that is in that dump truck. I mean, it's like they'll be quiet, quiet, quiet for so long. Invisible, right? Invisible for so long. Detached, you know, on their phone, on their iPad, on their uh, Kindle, whatever, taking in information. But then if they should so choose to back up and dump that dump truck out on you, you can be easily overwhelmed with the amount of information that is contained uh, in that five. And you may at times think to yourself, why would anybody know this? Why would anybody want to know this? How does knowing this keep you safe? How is knowing this, why? Um, because for some of the rest of us, we may not see the value in gathering so much um, specific information. I know as a seven, I go to five when I'm healthy and, and I see it over and over. You know, I'll get interested in a subject and I will dive deep into that subject. Deep for me, a seven. Three months, you know, I'll read everything I can read and listen to everything I can listen to and I will just absorb all that I can absorb. But, but sevens are generalists. I think we're called the epicure or something like that, adventurer, enthusiast. We become very enthusiastic about something like a five does. The difference is, is we don't tend to stay with it. We move on because we become very generalistic in our knowledge. We want to learn a lot about information. And then when we feel like we've pretty well mastered it and I can play a few licks on the guitar with that song, then we want to move on and learn something else. We get excited about something else. I think the five, you know, a true five can stay with that information a lot longer and go a lot deeper than I can as a seven. I just get bored with it and I start to move on to other things. Where a five, you know, maybe just continues on and on and on deeper and deeper into that information as they unravel it and challenge all the assumptions. Um, okay, so they carve out a niche for themselves, you know, as the expert on this specific topic. Think like, you know, if you, if you learn everything you can learn about Apple computers, well, if you just learn all you can learn about how Apple computers work, you kind of are safe in a sense. I mean, you kind of always could have a job. I mean, if nothing else, work at the Apple store, right? And you could help people out. You could fix computers or you could maybe get a job at Apple building computers. And that's kind of the way the five, I think, approaches the world. If I learn everything I can learn, know all that I can know, then I'll be secure. I'll be safe. Um, but here's the problem. What happens if you are an expert in Apple computers and you're an IT guy and you work for a, a huge corporation, let's say you work for an airline, you work for Delta Airlines or something, and they decide one day that they're going to switch all of their systems from Apple to something else. And see, this is where fives kind of like can look like a seven. A healthy five who's withdrawn in their natural state, withdrawn, can become like an assertive seven when they are in an unhealth. In other words, when stress hits them, like if all of a sudden the information they've gathered is of no more importance, you know, or the information they've gathered they suddenly realize has been all based on faulty assumptions, then they can look like a seven in that they begin kind of, I like the word lunging. They start lunging toward, well, okay, if not Apple computers, then then what, you know? if. If I've spent all my life learning about how to install car alarms and what the kind of the best car, and then now all of a sudden every car comes with an alarm standard, I don't need to install car alarms anymore, then well, what am I going to study now? What am I going to learn now? What, what are my skills going to you know, provide for me now? And so they might start lunging at other topics, kind of like a seven does. They might start lunging into other topics, searching for what that new niche is going to be. And panicking, you know, insecurity, panicking in a sense of what am I going to study and learn and, and, and who am I now? That now what I've learned is no longer needed or necessary. 
unhealthy sevens or sevens when they're kind of unhealthy can can kind of lunge into conversations too and i think that's a good word for it when they kind of when they kind of back the dump truck to people who don't want the information or don't need the information or it's not useful they kind of lunge into conversations and throw out all this information when it doesn't help the situation now when fives are healthy okay when they're healthy and they're secure this is when it's awesome okay because healthy fives look like an assertive eight okay which is the challenger all right what that means is when fives have been gathering all this information and then a dragon actually does appear then they can they can show up to that crisis or that problem with all of that great information that they've gathered and they can say the appropriate information and share that at the appropriate time with the appropriate people to save the day in other words they step in at just the right time with the challenging information and challenge others with the appropriate information and sort of uh, either relieve fears and concerns or shed light on the situation in a new way so that people can better handle and deal with I think like a medical doctor would be perfect okay or a researcher a medical researcher would be perfect you know so they're gathering all this information and seeing patients and getting all this information and then you show up with a disease you show up with a sickness or an illness and that five can study what's going on in your tests and study what's going on the symptoms you're you know exhibiting and then they can share their information uh, at the appropriate time in the appropriate way uh, to relieve and bring healing that's when a five shows up like an eight is when they share their information in the appropriate time in the appropriate way to give insight and uh, to help the situation uh, when they just show you how smart they are it's kind of like they're lunging like a seven uh, and they're they're giving you information but it's of no importance and it's not related to the crisis at hand and and that isn't you know all that helpful okay so let's see like a spectator on a bench sometimes a five can uh, study life but fail to get engaged in life and we don't want you to do that we want you to be engaged in life not just a spectator um, so they want to get to the bottom of things uh, my son by the way you know he speaking of a five he loves to listen to audio books so he likes to read but he really loves to just he, he's a tinkerer so he likes a lot of fives are like this he wants to do something with his hands he wants to um, you know play a, a one of those mind-numbing video games you know where like subway surfer kind of thing you know where it's just high quick movement and so he's playing a video game but he's listening to audiobooks um, that he gets from the library and in one week he listened to the entire Harry Potter series for I think the third time in a week it's a lot of I mean you're talking 13 16 hours a day of focused concentration and then that week was over he listened to the whole Percy Jackson series the week after you know I'm amazed at that ability to focus and concentrate um, and take all that information in and most of us just won't sit there that long you know we won't do the seat time to absorb all that information and that's one of the things that really blows me away about fives is they'll just become engrossed in whatever has their attention until they discover something entirely new or something entirely different they love to learn but they don't necessarily seek out a, a teacher they become experts highly innovative and highly imaginative um, they like to challenge conventional thinking and that's when it's helpful when it's productive is when they go to the five and they challenge you with their information to to be to solve problems okay or to unravel your falsely held beliefs that's when it's helpful um, other areas of their life can become neglected I already talked about that they may walk around sort of in stinky socks you know um, food on their shirt 
without really paying any attention to it or caring about it because that's not what the focus of their attention is. Um, let's see. They can often get very interested in offbeat subjects or esoteric subjects. Uh, they can have sort of an, an antagonistic stance against others and against the world and become aggressive. Uh, aggressive. That's a good word. Abrasive and aggressive. Okay. Or defensive. Think like the prickly old cactus out there. Okay. Um, iconoclastic shattering your, your, your deeply held ideas. Uh, when they, they, they can, they can have a tendency toward, <laughs> like Ebenezer Scrooge, becoming an old, I like the word curmudgeon, okay? Kind of becoming an old curmudgeon, uh, like that old cactus. They can, if, if they don't, if they don't get healthy, um, they can become so reclusive and so isolated that they can become strange, okay? And cynical and argumentative and kind of the whole world is stupid, the whole world, where the four I think looks at the world as uncouth and uneducated, uninspiring. The five looks at the world, they can, an unhealthy five can start to look at the world like, uh, uh, like idiots, like none of these people measure up. They're all going around in their blind lives, foolish to what's really going on in the universe. And they, they, they can, you know, without any real sense of depth to them, I mean, spiritual depth or emotional depth, they can become nihilist. Or am I saying that right? Nihilistic, nihilistic, meaning that nothing really has any meaning at all. Their, their deep questions and, and thoughts can take them to a point of unhealth where maybe nothing really means anything. And they can kind of go, go beyond the depths of the cave down the rabbit hole. Down the rabbit hole meaning like we're never going to, we're never going to see them again. Like they're gone. Like, you know, they've just become so outlandish and so unraveled in their ideas that they've become of no benefit. They've become their own worst enemy. Like they've gone into the dark matter, you know, they've gone down the black hole, down the rabbit hole. Uh, the world has become just too much and they detach from everyone. Um, by the way, fives are most irritated by loud noises. So if you have a five in your life, my dad was a five. There's times when I could kind of see him as a one, but he's a five. Um, always very sensitive to loud noises, um, very sensitive to children, you know, intruding on their space. Kids are always laughing too loud and singing too loud and very sensitive to, to, to sounds and because that's how they're taking information in. So that's like their vehicle to connect with the world. By the way, if fives want to connect with you, they're going to do it through information. You know, um, you're going through a hard time in your life. Maybe you're going through a divorce or a loss of a child or something where a four is going to want to sit there and tell me more, you know, and they're going to connect with you emotionally over that tragedy and tears in their eyes, listening to your tears. The five is going to probably be more distant, withdrawn, and they're going to hand you a card, you know, of a great lawyer to call or a great funeral home to call. And they helped you. That's their help is... Not that they cried with you, but I gave you the information that you needed for the time. So that's what you, and, and when a five is, you're driving down the road in your car and they're, and they're unloading the Marvel universe to you or unloading everything about combustion engines or whatever it is they're interested in, just realize that's their way of trying to make a connection with you. In other words, they're trying to, to love you. They're trying to love you. They're sharing what's most important to them with you, information. Um, the rest of the kids in the family are saying, will you please stop? Will you please quit telling us about whatever? We don't care about combustion engines. We don't care about the difference in jet engines or whatever it is. 
But if you can learn to appreciate what's really going on here is is your five is trying to share with you a moment of what's most important to them. They're trying to be vulnerable with you through the sharing of information. If you can see it for what it is, maybe you can learn to appreciate it. And even if it's hard for you to, to sit with listening to all that information, if you can just receive it for what it is, this person is trying to make a connection with me, then maybe it can, you can be a little more sensitive to what's going on and a little more receptive to them. So the five wing four is called the iconoclast. They can be a little more morbid and dark. Um, you know, I think like the funeral home director, um, you know, it's not going to bother them uh, to, to do the embalming, you know. Um, the Stephen Kings, the Dean Kuntzes of the world, you know, are the five wing fours. They, um, you know, I think, I think back to those ghost shows, you know, the demonologist, which, where do you get that degree, you know? How do you become a demonologist? I don't remember that being offered in seminary. I don't remember that being offered at the university. Again, it's probably a bunch of fives, right? Because that's the perfect job for a five wing four is, you know, cast out the dragon, right? Uh, the demonologist. Um, they're not as scientifically oriented as maybe the five wing six. The five wing six is called the problem solver. Um, they tend to be more interested in what you might say the hard sciences like engineering, architecture, science, um, biology, anatomy, those things that can be looked at and observed where the five wing four, the, again, you got the four, right? Different, different, differentiating themselves. So the five wing six wants to deal more with what can be studied under a lab microscope, that kind of things. Real knowledge, you might say, hard knowledge, hard sciences. And I think the five wing four is a little more interested in like, I think like the Dungeons and Dragons, the epic, you know, strategies, um, war games, those kinds of things where it's not necessarily hard science. It's more speculative type things. Okay, uh, here's some fives that you may know from contemporary culture. Ron Swanson on Parks and Recreation is a good example of what a five can look like. And again, if you think about that show, Ron's kind of living his whole life so that people will stay out of his office, right? I mean, he has a gun on his desk, like a mounted gun that he points at people when they sit across the desk from him to keep them away, you know? Um, Creed and White on The Office are uh, both fives. I think Creed is a five wing four and, and Dwight is more of a five wing six. Tim Burton, the um, movie director, producer, writer. Agatha Christie, that gives you an image of what goes on in a five's mind. Problem solving, you know, we're gonna make this story but we're gonna make it, you know, very detailed and an investigator. Who does Agatha Christie create? Investigators, inspectors, right? That's a five. Alfred Hitchcock, probably the five wing four. There, there's that morbid, you know, um, master of horror, okay? Michael Crichton, probably the five wing six, you know, the, let's write about what could happen in Jurassic Park and, you know, Patrick O'Brien, the author of Master and Commander of the Far Side of the World and all those other books that go along with that series. Stephen King, Dean Coots, Gary Larson, the writer of the Far Side comics. The Far Side comics is five world, okay? So like the eight is the culture of the mafia. You know, the uh, Enneagram type eight could be called the culture of the mafia. I think the uh, five could be like the culture of the far side comics. It's very dry. It's very funny, but it's very dry. Uh, it's its own style of humor, okay? Uh, if you don't know far side comics, then you're probably under 30, all right? Go Google it, okay? Uh, Sir Isaac Newton, Charles Darwin, Albert Einstein, Jane Goodall, the, uh, you know, the uh, scientist that worked with the uh, gorillas. 
Albert Einstein, Jane Goodall, Nikola, Nikolai Tesla, Stephen Hawking. You start to get a sense of what fives are here, okay? Um, giant brains, little batteries for dealing with people. Albus Dumbledore in the Harry Potter series is a five. Uh, ben Shapiro is a good example of a five who goes to eight. You know, it's all information. Information is going to save you. Information is going to protect you. But he's challenging, challenging, challenging with that information. Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, Anthony Hopkins, the actor, George Lucas, the director, Leonard Malton, who used to do the, uh, you know, the movie critic. I think it was, I think he was one of the thumbs guys. Napoleon Dynamite, I think, is a good example of sort of the awkwardness of fives. Um, Sheldon from Big Bang Theory, great example of a five. Maybe mixed with a touch of something else, but I think Sheldon is a good example of sort of like the five who's completely consumed with information, completely consumed with, with the things that nobody else knows or understands, but doesn't always relate in the best way with the people around him. It's kind of like the absent-minded professor, unaware of like social norms and expectations of relationships, so focused on information and so focused on the world of the inner space that he just kind of has disregard for sometimes people's feelings. Okay, so we talked about withdrawn fives disintegrate into assertive sevens and healthy fives move toward assertive eights. As children, young fives may have felt that they had either no meaningful action with their parents or that their parents were too obtrusive or intrusive on their space. And so they kind of begin to push back in resistance against those parents. Um, they begin looking and searching for a niche or a niche you know, of information. The basic fear of the five is of being helpless, is of being useless, uh, incompetent, are incapable. That's the fear. So what is the fear? They're a fear type, five, six, and seven. What's the fear of the five? The fear of being useless. The fear of being inept or incapable. Again, when the dinosaur comes or when the dragon comes, nobody's going to know what to do. When the zombie apocalypse happens, nobody's going to know how to uh, stop it. So I'm going to be in my laboratory, you know, uh, working with all these chemicals until I figure out what's the key to unlock the, uh, the secret so that when the apocalypse happens, we'll all be safe. So that's the fear. That's the fear that's driving it, okay? Again, the, three, the, the two, three, and four, it's all driven by shame and the desire to run away from the shame. It's like a shame cloud, you know? And so the two says, well, if I'm serving and helping, I don't need to be ashamed. I'm giving, I'm helping. The three, if I've accomplished so much, then, I've, then my worth is determined by all that I've accomplished. I don't need to be ashamed. The four says, I'm unlike everybody else. I'm different than everybody else, so I don't need to be ashamed. The five, six, and a seven are all running away from fear to what they think will make them safe or keep them safe or at least alleviate those fears to some degree. So they want to master something. They want to be masters. Um, all right, I talked about connecting to people with information. Conversation dumps on you. They want to believe in their heart that I'm an intelligent person. I'm a perceptive person. The lie that fives tell themselves is I am so smart that no one else can understand the things I understand and no one else can appreciate the things I appreciate or know the things I know and I am safe now because I understand the world or some aspect of the world at the end of the day you know I mean how do you know you're understanding the right things or that you know enough so this is kind of the lie they tell themselves. Um, fives are tempted to, to replace direct experience in the world with concepts about the world. 
Um, the unhealthy five can literally think too much. And again, I can say they kind of go down that rabbit hole and it, they go dark on us. And it can cut them off from living life that's right in front of them now. And helping connect with the people that are in their life right now. So they get lost in their own thought processes until they lose all perspective of real life that's going on in front of them. Um, highly active minds, intensely driven, uh, can disappear socially. The error in their thinking is that they are disconnected from the world, that they're living in, the, that they're in the van with the computer monitors and the radio c contact. But they're not. They're in real life. You're in real life with the rest of us. You're walking among us, living in real life with the rest of us. You can't just be an observer to life. You're a participant of life, just like I am. You're not just observing facts. You're creating new facts with how you live and how you interact with people. Um, healing can begin for the five. So this is where it gets fun. You say, so what? So what? Let's talk about the so what. You're a five, or you live with a five, and you want information. Here's your information, okay? Here's where healing begins for a five. Healing begins for a five when they can say, maybe I can trust people. Because remember, the five sort of thing, the only one they can depend on is themselves. Maybe I can trust people and let them know what I need Maybe I could live happily in the world as it is. Maybe my future is going to be okay. After all, how do I know if I've really mastered all there is to know about something anyway? And so their fears begin to become relieved, not have as much dominance over their lives when you can learn to say these things. Here's steps to health for the five. Okay, here's the 10 steps to health for the five. Number one, learn to notice when all of your thinking and speculating is taking you away from your immediate experiences. In other words, start to realize when all of your deep thinking is taking you out of your present context. Be present to life. Don't let all of your intense thinking keep you from your child's recital or being emotionally present at your child's recital. Number two, you have a tendency to be extremely intense and high strung. That can make it difficult for you to relax and unwind. Make an effort to calm down and sort of like let yourself relax. Now, one of the ways that fives can be like unhealthy sevens is fives can abuse substances. You know, sevens are the most likely to abuse substances, drugs, alcohol, other things. Fives, when they become frustrated, hurt, upset, disappointed, or they feel like they've lost their niche or their niche is no longer helpful, one of the things that can happen for the five is they can, like a seven, can reach for something to sort of calm them down. Think like a parent. Let's say a five parent has a child that's unhealthy and in the hospital. Maybe the child had a stroke or something, an accident. What's the five going to do? Research. They're going to research everything they can to get as much information as they can about their child's condition to try to help that child turn their health around. What if the child's health doesn't turn around? In fact, they grow worse and maybe even die. Then the information didn't help you, did it? So what do you do now? Well, the five might feel frustrated that the information didn't work, didn't save them in any way. And so now they reach to a substance to sort of help them acclimate themselves to the world as it is now. Fives, because you're so high strung and so wired up all the time with information, learn to calm yourself down in a more healthy way, whether it be through leisure or recreation or meditation or walks or something. 
taking walks or something, listening to music, prayer, whatever. Number three, you see many possibilities to life, but often have a hard time deciding and judging which is the most important and which is the least important. It's a good thing to know about yourself. Allow yourself, this is going to be hard for you, to get advice from others. Allow yourself to ask other people their uh, ideas and opinions. People you trust. It'll help you get a better perspective, a more well-rounded perspective. It'll also help you learn to trust others, which can be difficult for you. Number four, notice when your intense thoughts, research, pastimes, games, information gathering, all that are distracting you from what you really ought to be doing right now. What I mean is, you know, you're a, a junior in college and you're supposed to be writing a paper, but rather than writing a paper about, you know, butterflies, you're studying American history because that's what's interesting to you. So notice when all, you may be doing a lot of intense study, but it may not be anything that's assigned. And then, you know, your assignment comes due and it's time to hit the panic button. Or maybe you don't take it very seriously because you think, well, this teacher doesn't know what they're talking about anyway, so what's the point of me taking it seriously? Very five kind of thought to have. So notice when all of your wired up research and information is pulling you away from what needs to be done in life. Again, this is the five whose room is a mess, whose closet is a mess, you know, but rather than do what needs to be done, cleaning up their room, they're engaged in research on whatever got their interest at the moment. Don't uh, know enough when you need to take action. Okay, number five. You have difficulty when it comes to trusting people. Okay? Fives have tendency to believe that the only person they can depend on is themselves. It's hard for you to open up and make yourself accessible to other people. Your awareness that relationships can be problematic tends to create a self-fulfilling prophecy for you. Relationships are worth the effort. And it will take effort. And for fives, it may take a lot of effort. You're going to have to work through your disagreements with people rather than just detaching from them and isolating yourself. You need a few intimate friends in your life just like everybody else does. That will greatly enrich your life. Number six, try to be more cooperative with people and less of a loner. Um, just because people may not be able to keep up with your rapid mind doesn't mean they can't be great friends to you. Number seven, realize that sometimes you can make people feel uncomfortable. Again, you may have the ability to awkward people out of a room. Um, your ideas are so fascinating. You're that you can forget social norms and just the niceties that make relationships work, the grease that makes relationships work. Like walking in and saying, hey Mary, how are you doing today? How's your family? It's good to see you. Those little things that we do in relationships, you may look at it and say, they don't serve a purpose. I don't want to know how she's doing. I don't want her to know how I'm doing. But those are all of the tools that people use to keep relationships friendly. Friendly people in your life are a good thing. They'll watch your back and they'll be there for you when you have needs. If you come in and out of the office like Ebenezer Scrooge, you know, don't be surprised when people treat you like Ebenezer Scrooge. Okay, so uh, number eight, you have a tendency to look down on those that you think are less intelligent than you. A helpful thought for you is that there are multiple kinds of intelligences. There's book smarts and there's street smarts. And there's, you know, romance smarts or relationship smarts or parenting smarts. And just because you gathered a lot of information doesn't really, doesn't really mean for sure that you know how to do life and relationships. So remember that there are lots of different kinds of intelligences out there and other people may be intelligent in ways in which you're not intelligent. Maybe they're more intuitive. Maybe they're more spiritual. Maybe they're more relational. And so learn to appreciate other kinds of intelligences rather than just the kind that you tend to exhibit. Use your gifts to benefit others, not to belittle them. Number nine, if others begin to avoid you or to react to you antagonistically, 
consider the possibility that maybe you are the problem uh, rather than them. Not that they're stupid, but maybe you're just coming across like a prickly old cactus. Okay, it's hard to hug a, a cactus. Number 10, you have an enormous capacity for understanding. Think of ways to develop that understanding in a compassionate way to help others, to be more understanding of others. Everybody has reasons to believe what they believe and to do what they do. And people aren't stupid just because they do things differently than you. Try to understand the reasons they have and give them the benefit of the doubt. Use your insight by studying people and becoming more compassionate and caring for people uh, and more gentle with people and their feelings uh, to, surf, to soften up your hard edges. Don't just use your head in life, use your heart in life as well. Well, thank you guys for this study. It's been great, um, good information. I hope it helps you and I hope it helps those of you who are fives and those of you who are close to fives. Um, and as always, be present to life. And I hope this information helps you do that. Until we, till I see you guys again next time, like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for your support.